regarding the issue of gelatin or um, the likes of it, I think they have something like uh, uh, collagen and maybe glyceride or whatever. Regarding these uh, substances, first of all, we have to acknowledge the fact that it was not found at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And scholars, because of that, were divided into two parties. One says that it is forbidden to use such products because it contains pork or it contains the remains of dead animals that were not slaughtered. And the other party says this is true providing that this remains of the dead animal or the ingredients taken from collagen or from the pork meat or the pork fat is used as it is. There is no difference among scholars that this is completely forbidden to use or to consume. The problem is that the scholars that say it's permissible to use the uh, uh, gelatin, they say that it does not contain anymore the chemical characteristics of pork fat or pork meat or even the meat of the dead animals or the bones or whatever because it undergoes a very lengthy process that transforms it from something that was haram into something that is completely different. And this is a rule in the Islamic Sharia or in the Islamic Fiqh. Assume that we have water and the water turns, which is pure by nature, and this water turns into another substance that is impure, that is najis. Would we still insist on treating it as its first uh, um, substance it was, which is water? Definitely, definitely not. If a person drinks water and the byproduct of his drinking is urine, so does anyone say, well, we have to treat this urine as its origin, which is pure and which is water? Definitely not. Likewise, if you look at grape juice, grape juice is pure and is permissible. If it turns by itself or by our own doing into wine, into an intoxicant, it becomes Najis and it becomes impure for us to consume or to use. We have to dispose of it. But hypothetically speaking, and this happens, and this is one of the characteristics of wine, it can, if left in uh, uh, its place, it would turn into vinegar. So, do we say that vinegar is haram or halal? Can we consume it or it is impure, it is not just we should avoid it and dispose of it? By the consensus of scholars, if it was turned by itself into vinegar from juice, then it is halal, though it passed by the phase of intoxicant. It passed by the phase of wine. And you go on and on and on. And one of the simplest and most logical examples the scholars usually give is that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to Medina, he offered to buy a land from two orphans who owned it and they refused to take money for it. He wanted to prepare and make this land the Masjid of Medina, which exists nowadays. And they refused to take any money for it. So the Prophet ﷺ prepared the land and he found out that there were graves of some of the pagans 
who were buried long ago. The Prophet ﷺ ordered them to dig the graves and to take the remains, the bones, out. But he did not order them to take the soil that surrounded the graves or the corpses, which means that the soil itself is pure and all what he had to, to move were the bones, but what was disintegrated or what was left over of the bodies, the Prophet ﷺ did not instruct them to remove it because it turned into something that was pure. And finally, scholars also give the example of a dog falling into uh, a pit that they prepare and make salt in. And if the dog falls into this pit and he's buried into it and he dies, and this dog, after a month or two, we come and look for it, we cannot find any trace of it because it was transformed by itself into salt because of the surroundings of it and the smell, the taste, and the color remain the same. This means that the dog was 100% transformed into salt and this makes it pure and Allah knows best.